시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. Greetings. This is Prosthodontics on Friday Night Live, which addresses different steps of prosthodontic treatment as well as its side effects. The grand theme of 2023 is back to the basics of full denture. Today, Professor Baek Jang Hyun of Kyung Hee University Dental Hospital is going to talk about immediate denture. Nice to meet you, Professor. Thank you for coming to Prosthodontics on Friday Night Live. I think this is your second lecture here today. Today, you're going to talk about immediate denture. I think this is a really interesting topic. Can you briefly talk about your lecture before we begin? This is a very difficult topic. Immediate denture is the topic of the day. Immediate denture is what we provide after extraction. Extraction itself is hard enough, but even before extraction, the patient would have gone through a lot of uh, physical and emotional difficulties to have reached this point. And we need to provide immediate denture. In that situation, stress is felt by patient and dentist alike. I want to talk about how we can provide a more effective and efficient denture right after extraction. I've put in a lot of thought as to how we can make the whole ordeal more comfortable for the patient. After listening to you talk, I became more intrigued. I look forward to your lecture on immediate denture. Those of you watching from Dental Site, you can participate real time using the chat, leave your questions, have them answered, and through Lucky Draw, Starbucks coffee coupons will be sent. Those of you chosen as best question will receive three Starbucks coffee coupons, and I look forward to your keen interest. Let us begin Professor Baek Jang Hyun's lecture. Greetings, I'm Professor Baek jang of uh, Prosthodontics Division at Kyung University. I'm sure you put in a lot of hard effort throughout the week treating patients, and thank you for joining us in this late hour. As mentioned to Professor Choi, I'm going to talk about immediate denture today. This is the big category, four of them. First is taking impression. I'm going to talk about how to take impression. And also, I'm going to talk about bite registration. Third, this is more clinical, and I'm going to talk about precautions that we need to take when we deliver immediate denture. Anesthesia would be wearing off by then, and the patient may be complaining of pain. Also, stopping the bleeding may be required. In this poor condition, we need to deliver immediate denture. I want to talk about what precautions that we need to take to make things more comfortable. These days, we use digital dentistry to fabricate the prosthesis, immediate denture, and provisional denture can be fabricated using digital method. And I want to talk about immediate denture using the digital method. First, I'm going to talk about taking impression and bite registration for immediate denture fabrication. When we fabricate denture, this has been emphasized over and over through the times. We take preliminary impression and make individual tray. Order molding is done using this individual tray and final impression is taken. This is what we know. Immediate denture needs to be made in the same way. There's teeth currently, but the teeth will be extracted and it's going to be full dentures. Or it can be a partial denture. After border molding, final impression needs to be done accurately. Preliminary impression is taken as shown, individual tray is fabricated, and using the conventional way, border molding is done, rubber impression material or 
polysulfide materials are used to take final impression and create model. However, this is not easy realistically speaking. I find it difficult myself because the teeth that are residing in the patient's mouth are to be extracted. There can be severe mobility and when you position and take out individual tray, the teeth can get in the way. The patient may complain of pain in that case. Rubber material is harder than alginate and if you use this kind of impression material and take impression, extraction can occur. It's very difficult when fabricating a media to denture. You need to make individual tray and do border molding and take final impression, but realistically speaking, this is difficult to do. When you take impression, alginate impression was taken. There are cases where extraction occurs. We need to inform the patient and the caretaker ahead of such possibility. Teeth with severe mobility can be extracted when impression is taken. Such communication is necessary for good relation with the patient. Let's take a look at an actual case. This was not my case. This was a case introduced in a textbook published by Full Denture Faculty Conference. As shown on the panoramic image, the conditions of the teeth are very poor and multiple teeth needed to be extracted. And you can see that in the periapical image as well. Model is made using alginate and preliminary impression. And this kind of uh, tray, which looks like recording base, is fabricated. Wax spacer is used for tissue stop in the upper and in the lower, a groove is made. Acrylic material is added to fabricate tray. So you can uh, take impression of the edentulous area and uh, do border molding ahead. In this case, green stick compound was used and border molding was done. Geo paste was used to take impression. And then with the impression in the patient's oral cavity, alginate is used for pickup. By using this double impression technique, we can create a more precise border. Here is another case as in the previous case. We used a base that looks similar to recording base as a tray. We did boulder molding using compound and took impression using polysulfide material. Then uh, with the impression reinserted into the patient's mouth, we took a pickup impression with a final impression tray, allowing us to make the border areas more clear. From the model created with this doubled impression technique, we made a recording base and registered bite. From this point, we proceeded in the conventional manner, mounting it on the articulator and using the registered bite to also mount the mandibular model. As shown here, when there is posterior extension in edentulous cases due to the absence of molars or premolars, this method can be chosen. Border molding for the posterior areas are done in advance and impressions are taken with the double impression technique. This case was from an actual patient of mine. In this case, the upper right teeth were damaged and the teeth that required extraction were marked with X. At times, it can be difficult to initially conduct the border molding of the posterior extension, take impression, and then proceed to take a pickup impression using alginate. In this case, you take impression with alginate. As mentioned earlier, taking preliminary impression and taking border molding is the best approach. However, considering that these teeth will be extracted at the same time as taking impression, a uh, decision was made to take a clinical impression with alginate. The crucial point here is that uh, we need to extend the stock metal tray using utility wax sufficiently. The stock metal tray is used to take impressions of healthy dentition. 
get for patients on the verge of extraction and uh, immediate denture fabrication. Their teeth are likely not properly aligned. They could be extruded or in labial version. So stock metal tray without extended borders can make it extremely difficult to take impression of the entire border area. For the upper jaw, it is essential to extend the border of the stock tray with wax. The same applies for the mandible. On the buccal or lingual side, efforts need to be made to use utility wax to deliberately capture the borders more profoundly. Another important point is that even when taking impression with alginate, anatomically significant landmarks must be clearly captured in the impression. This includes the retromolar pad, which is vital for determining the height of the occlusal plane, the retromolar pad, hemular notch, incisive papilla, mid palatal suture, and labial frenum are structures that must be included in the impression. In the case of immediate dentures, where incisive papilla and mid palatal suture and other anatomical landmarks need to be accurately represented on the model, it becomes quite challenging when teeth are absent or not in their proper positions. I often rely on the mid palatal suture and labial frenum as references for establishing the midline. Even when taking impression with alginate, it is crucial to include these anatomical structures to take accurate impression. As mentioned earlier, in the case of immediate denture fabrication, many teeth with mobility issues exist. Here, tooth number 14 was initially present and impression was taken nicely. We created it on the model as well, but this tooth exhibited significant mobility. This means the tooth could have slightly moved during impression taking and bite registration, leading to mounting errors. I noted dynamic oral environment and static model because in the oral environment, teeth with mobility issues move, but we cannot observe this mobility on the static model. It is essential we mark teeth with significant mobility on the lab request to inform the dental technician responsible for model fabrication and mounting. Instruction should be delivered to remove these mobile teeth from the model before mounting to avoid errors caused by these teeth with mobility. Once mounting is complete, then we move on to remove the teeth set for extraction and start the arrangement of artificial teeth. I've mentioned this earlier, teeth that are up for extraction are unlikely to be in optimal positions or orientations. They may be elongated or labioversion might have occurred. Impressions were taken and we need to avoid making mistake of aligning artificial teeth based on adjacent teeth or the original position of the teeth. For instance, tooth number 12 is significantly elongated. Tooth number 11 was not made accordingly with tooth number 12, but was made much shorter. The drawn line represents the patient's lip line at rest. This is marked on the model. It is essential not to follow the length of tooth number 12, but to align artificial tooth number 11 according to the patient's lip line. The line in the middle is the midline. It is critical to take impression of anatomical landmarks accurately. The patient's lip line and interpapillary line should be reflected on the model to provide correct information to the dental technician. Teeth alignment can be done in this way. We should not follow the existing teeth, but often need to establish new standards for tooth alignment. The upper anterior alignment 
was completed, and in the same way, lower anterior teeth alignment was started. If the upper anterior teeth are well aligned, you can follow that. If the position of the teeth are misaligned or distorted, don't hesitate to remove them and refer to standard positions. So we've learned during full denture classes, such as positioning the incisive papilla 8 millimeters anteriorly, or measuring 23 millimeters down from the labial border of the upper jaw, which means that it'll be the incisal length. Teeth alignment should be done using these standards. The upper and lower anterior teeth have been aligned, and posterior teeth alignment was done. Because decision was made to extract residual teeth, that they were removed on the model before aligning artificial teeth. We need to take impression of important anatomical structures such as retromolar pad in order to align teeth for immediate denture just like as we do for full dentures. Teeth alignment was complete for the upper and lower anterior and posterior. On the model, we typically minimize the removal and proceed with curing. One thing I'd like to mention is that after aligning and fastening artificial teeth, we make a note for denture processing. After making the note, we take a duplicate impression of the model with removals as if predicting the post-extraction scenario using alginate. We keep duplicate aside as reference for what the situation might look like post-extraction and take an impression of the omnibac. The purpose of this is to place the omnibac on top after carrying out all the extractions. It helps us to identify if there's need for bone flattening or if there's any protruding soft tissue. If the omnibac does not fit properly, you can do alveoloplasty or gingival trimming. This is a must. Otherwise, as shown in the bottom left image, if you forego that step, Although the bone is protruding and if you do suture, the immediate denture will not be set properly. You can do internal adjustments, but there's an undercut present due to protruding bone, and the patient will continue to experience discomfort regardless of adjustments or soft relining. That's why I recommend preparing an omni back in advance and fitting it post-extraction to identify and immediately address areas of significant protrusion. I think this can be very meaningful in clinical settings. Extractions were done and a provisional denture, which was fabricated ahead, was delivered. At times, you can see these kind of situations. I work at a university hospital, so I don't do extractions myself. I refer the patient to maxillo-oral facial department or periodontal department. If only extractions are performed, you can see that there is very significant undercut on the buccal and labial side. Then, denture becomes extremely thin. You may think that resorption may occur here, but resorption does not occur as expected in most cases. After extraction, within one or two months, you need to do border molding and proceed with implant placement. However, in the case of bone structures that look like torus, resorption does not occur easily. If only extractions are performed, in that case you need to reflect to flap again and do alveolar plasty. I experience this quite frequently clinically. If you have done an omni back and have adjusted here, then we would be able to prevent denture becoming too thin and adaptation can be done more easily. This case is not as severe as the previous case, but on the buccal side, you can see the bone protruding on the buccal side. And this area can be problematic when adapting immediate denture. The patient can feel extreme discomfort. I have talked about the basic process of uh, taking impression, ta taking bite record, and fabricating immediate denture clinically. I've talked about how omnibag should be used to check for undercuts and torus areas. 
And this is the precautions that I normally tell my patient after delivering immediate denture. What is most important is the fourth item after extraction. Within the next 24 hours, the patient should wear the immediate denture. If the patient takes out immediate denture because of discomfort, then there can be swelling in the gingiva. In that case, the immediate denture would not go back in, and the patient would feel too much pain to be able to wear it. So the recommendation is for the patient to wear the immediate denture for the next 24 hours. And I tell the patient that there can be severe pain and discomfort as the extraction socket heals and gingival swelling resolves, it will become loose. Then additional relining can be done to adjust the immediate denture. This is communicated to the patient. Professor, I'm sure you're going to address it soon, but can I ask you a question? I'm sure you're going to talk about adapting denture based on my experience after extraction and denture delivery at times the results may not be as aesthetic as anticipated in this case it can be quite baffling for instance the upper teeth may look elongated right after delivery you may feel conflicted as to whether denture should be refabricated in order to prevent such circumstances what should i do I have experience of such baffling instances. Patients have complained. Some caretakers have complained that the teeth looks elongated and protruded. If we go back to what I've mentioned in the lecture, if you take a look, number 12 is protruded, and I've drawn a lip line here. This is to reference this when aligning artificial teeth. If lip line is not marked properly on the model, the lab technician would not be aware of the elongated teeth and aligned teeth referencing this. Then you'd end up with a teeth alignment that have extrusion. Lip line needs to be marked on the model. This is imperative. Another point. We anticipate post-extraction and adjust and cure the model. But this is not exactly the same as after extraction. When you deliver immediate denture, and at times there can be interference and Immediate denture may not be fully set. Sufficient relief should be done on the inner surface before full seating, but this is easier said than done. The patient continues to bleed and you need to use fit checker to see where compression occurs, but it's not easy. Hence, relining is done with the denture not fully seated. In that case, elongated and unnatural looking denture can result. We always need to think about the length of teeth. And you also need to use Omnibec you need to make the ridge post-extraction similar to what was anticipated using Omnibec. In that case, you can prevent the issues. We need to take into account teeth elongation and we need to use Omnibec. We need to make sure that the splint is reflected accurately and we need to make further adjustments on the denture. Yes, inner adjustment may be necessary. I've only talked about elongation, but patients with bad perio, in a lot of cases, there's significant labioversion of upper anterior teeth. We need to consider the inclination of buccolingual aspect. We are not going to make denture with protruded teeth. So in the case where the tooth has significant labioversion when aligning artificial teeth, such angle should be adjusted. Then we'd be able to restore dentition to what it looked when it was healthy. So that the lip does not protrude too much. Thank you for the answer.
Professor, there's a lot of heated interest on the real-time chat on dental site. Let's take a look. Smile. Professor, Pek Jang-yeon, nice to meet you. Let's go cross the antics on Friday. Good doctor, Professor Cho, Professor Peck. I look forward to the lecture on immediate denture. Words of encouragement was posted. Omi Omi, Professor Pek jang you look dashing. Professor Cho Rino, you look even more dashing. Today is about Professor Pek jang so I think we need to focus on him. I look forward to today's prosthodontics on Friday. There are other contents. I have a question. I look forward to your lecture, Professor Pek jang Thank you for all the good contents in prosthodontics on Friday seminar. A lot of comments have been made by I have a question. Pretty sky. Professor Peck, you look like a model. I thought so too. He definitely looks like a model. Pretty Sky, another comment, Professor Cho, Professor Peg, you look awesome. I think today's show is Models on Friday rather than Prosthetics on Friday. Thank you for the compliments. Among those who have left words of encouragement, I would like to give one Starbucks coffee coupon as the MC. I would like to give coffee coupon to Pretty Sky who has made many compliments to Professor Peck and me. We will send Starbucks coffee coupon to Pretty Sky. Dear audience, thank you for leaving many questions and comments. We still have a best question raiser and we have many Starbucks coffee coupons left. I look forward to your continued interest and the questions raised on the chat screen will be addressed after Professor Pek Jang Hyun's lecture. This will be addressed during Q&A session. Professor, please carry on with your digital lecture. Well, the next session is not about digital dentistry. It's about uh, precautions after immediate denture delivery. I'll carry on. What I've discussed thus far is uh, primarily about the textbook. I've talked about how to take impression and bite records. And I've talked about how we should mark teeth with mobility when taking bite record. I want to talk about the difficulties and considerations I've had clinically. After extraction, when delivering immediate denture, reliner is necessary. We call this tissue conditioner as well as soft liner. The two are very different, but they are used interchangeably by some. Some people find them confusing. I frequently receive questions about which type of soft liner or tissue conditioner is best to use. But in reality, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. Each material has its own unique properties. Let's talk about the fundamental concept inherent in both of these materials. It's viscoelasticity. I'm sure you've heard of it when you were studying. This term can be a bit complex. This is combination of viscosity and elasticity. Some may find it confusing. Think of viscosity as clay. It yields under pressure. It tries to regain its shape but does not do so fully. That is viscosity. On the other hand, elasticity, think of rubber impression material. It has elasticity but does not have viscosity like clay. Rubber is elastic material and, and clay is material with viscosity. Soft liner and tissue conditioner should both have viscoelasticity. They should be sufficiently soft to be gentle on the tissues, yet resilient enough to maintain their shape under masticatory pressure. There are different materials and they all have viscoelasticity. These products differ in gelation times. For instance, I often use a particular product not because it's superior, but because it has a shorter gelation time. 
it is shorter compared with other products. It takes about 2-3 to three minutes to reach a consistency that's soft yet stable enough to be removed from the oral cavity. Another product, this product might take up 30 minutes to reach a similar state. The duration of viscosity is quite significant, so like a clay, it continues to change when you adjust it. Whereas as for this material, within 2 or 3 minutes, it turns into something that is more like rubber. As for this product, it takes 30 minutes to reach a similar state. Therefore, when I provide immediate dentures, I use products with shortest gelation time because modeling the tissue liner for 30 minutes and having the patient exercise during that period is too time consuming. There's not much difference between this product and that one. In outpatient setting, I use a variety of products and prefer those with quicker gelation time for immediate dentures. For dynamic impressions or when the performance of the tissue conditioner needs to be maximized, products with longer gelation times are preferable. You need to use the different products accordingly with the different purposes. So I've talked about reliners. This was a patient I treated last week. I extracted tooth number 16 and delivered denture. I applied a soft liner, which then went inside the extraction socket. If the patient is sent home in this state, the socket will heal while still being deeply indented. In such cases, the soft liner inside the extraction socket needs to be trimmed. Using a small hot spatula, I remove the soft liner where there's indentation in the extraction socket. Because the gingival healing occurs, we need to remove this area. This is something that a lot of people miss. We need to secure space for gingival healing. As shown, removal should be done sufficiently. Space for gingival healing should be secured. Healing occurs and the desired rich form is achieved. This is a case that I've shown you earlier in the upper right area, number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, and 21. These teeth required extraction. I've mentioned this earlier, but double impression technique could not be used and there was risk of teeth extraction if a border molding was done. Alginate was used to take impression and denture was fabricated. You can see that denture border is quite thick. When I receive this kind of denture from lab technician, I adjust the denture ahead before the patient comes in. I make the border thin. Because soft liner is going to be used and border molding is going to be done, I remove the inner surface quite significantly. Because alginate was used to take impression, border becomes thicker. And if you add soft liner on top of that, the border becomes too thick and intentionally, the border area has been trimmed to make it thin. As shown on left, the border thickness has changed. Such preparations are done and I was at the outpatient office at Prosontix Division and after extraction the patient came to me. In this case, delivering immediate denture can be a little bit difficult. I've talked about removing soft liner in the extraction socket removal using spatula. However, in this case, if you do soft lining here, the soft liner may go into the extraction socket and get solidified in there. It can get, get tangled with suture and when you try to remove it, the suture may be destroyed. In this case, in the conventional way, I apply soft liner on the inner surface, which I've adjusted earlier, and then I use a clean wrap used in the kitchen. On top of the soft liner, this 
kitchen wrap is applied. And then you put this into a roll cavity and proceed. Then the clean wrap or kitchen wrap will prevent a soft liner going into the extraction socket. After removal, you can see that it has not gone into the extraction socket significantly and there's no tangling with the suture. If you use a forcep to remove the kitchen wrap, you can see that the extraction socket was not affected and in a clean manner, soft lining can be done. In this way, it's removed from a roll cavity and you put it in lukewarm water so that soft liner can be hardened. After that, I put it in ice water to make it more firm. Excess soft liner needs to be removed. Like taking final impression, border should be adjusted you adjust the cheek uh, area and you can see that there is excess soft liner. I adjust it like this. So this is a, a blunt spatula. I put it in hot water and heat it up and use the edge. In the past, I used to use sharp blades. I find using flat spatula much more convenient compared with hot to sharp blade. If you use a blade, even with the slightest contact, there can be significant scratches on the denture base. The hot blade may go into denture resin and can get stuck, so I prefer using a flat spatula. I heat it up rather than using the edge. I use the surface and rub the excess soft liner off. Using spatula, the border is adjusted and then this is placed into ice water. Although you use a blade or spatula, this does not become entirely clean. I put it in ice water and then use denture burr or polishing burr to adjust it. After soft relining on the inner surface of immediate denture, I'm not sure whether this is nicely shown in this image. This image was achieved after functional impression. Soft liner was used. You can see a lot of micro bubbles. I wondered about the most effective method to mix tissue conditioner or soft liners to minimize formation of bubbles while working clinically. The goal is always to achieve a bubble-free mixture that retains an appropriate level of viscosity. There's an approach where one adds additional powder to quickly attain the desired thickness. However, this method invariably introduces a significant amount of bubbles into the mixture, which is not ideal. I personally do not favor this technique of adding extra powder for a thicker mix. Instead, I prefer to start with a thinner mixture and allow it some time to naturally thicken as it sits. As time passes, the mixture gains viscosity on its own, transforming into the desired consistency without uh, the complication of excessive bubbles. What we need to tell to the patient after doing soft lining on the immediate denture is that when they take out the denture, the occlusal plane should face the bottom of the container. It should be inside the water. In other words, it needs to be contained like this. Occlusal plane is towards the bottom. If it is the other way around, the soft liner on the border side can be deformed, more so than the direction. In order to prevent the deformation of soft liner, I tell the patient to maintain denture in the container in a certain direction. After soft lining immediate denture, Rather than using polydent or alkylate perforated denture cleaner with micro bubbles, the patient should use a soap water because these solutions with micro bubbles can make soft liner multi porous. Rather than using polydent, soap water should be used to clean immediate denture or denture with soft lining. This is a bit of a tip, but if you have done soft lining on immediate denture, you need to replace the soft liner multiple times. 
once the extraction socket heals, so you do relining after removing the existing reliner. And after two to three weeks or after a month, the soft liner is removed once again and relining is done. This is necessary. Removing soft liner can be very difficult and frustrating. It is difficult to properly remove and at times there can be many issues. There is a product called a PVS adhesive. This is adhesive for rubber and pressure material. The adhesive is applied on the inner surface and if you add a soft lining on top of it, afterwards a soft liner can be removed very easily. You do not need to grind the soft liner off. If you use a rubber adhesive and do soft lining, then it can be very easy to remove. So this is a method I use clinically frequently. If you apply it too much, then soft liner may come off very easily. So in the border area, soft liner should be attached. So you just leave the denture texture there and you just apply the PVS adhesive on the inner surface so that it can be removed easily at a later date. This is a final topic, digital immediate denture. For clinicians, there is no major difference as to whether you make a conventional or digital prosthesis. This is about lab technique. For dentists, it's not majorly different. This is a case. In the upper, there was an implant. It was failing. Extraction was necessary. In the lower, there were residual teeth in the anterior area, but required extraction. If you look at panoramic image, it's much clearer. There's failing implant, and the residual teeth in the lower required extraction. Impression was taken, and in conventional way, wax rim was made. At initial visit, you can see that Vertical situation is not favorable, but vertical dimension was restored with waxed denture. You can see that the profile looks much better. And now I'm moving this file to CAD. Lower anterior are removed and teeth are aligned. 3D printing is done. There is base and teeth. They are separate. We need to deliver nicely fabricated immediate denture or denture. Regardless of whether it's conventional or digital, you need to do it properly. The benefit of using digital dentistry is that you can make it again if something has gone wrong. I've mentioned that I've corrected the vertical dimension and I wanted to check how the change will affect aesthetics or occlusion. In the CAD file, it's shown in red line. This is where residual teeth originally was. This was removed. Printing was done. For the upper, it was complete immediate denture. And before extraction, in order to check vertical dimension, denture was made for the posterior area and it was checked intraorally and it was quite satisfactory and I was able to simulate it ahead. 3D printed immediate dentures for the upper and lower were delivered. Through soft relining, it was delivered, it fit well, and the patient was satisfied. Not just for a full denture or immediate denture, I'm sure you do a lot of anterior provisional denture. Bell clasped flexible dentures are used. Bell plast flexible denture is more expensive to fabricate than thought. 3D printing. Flippers have wire, so it's anesthetic. 3D printing can be utilized to fabricate provisional denture in the interior area without wires. This is used widely. Last but not least, I want to talk about relining dentures fabricated with milling or 3D printing. As for conventional denture fabricated with heat polymerization, it has been verified sufficiently that rebasing can be done sufficiently regardless of using hard or soft liner. Many doubt whether relining can be properly done with milling or 3D printing. I have to look at some literature on this end.
The bonding strength of relining material was more unfavorable when 3D printed compared with conventional heat polymerized resin. So relining was not properly done. In this literature, it says that the printed denture bases had significantly lower tensile bond strength values than the injection and mill denture bases. This is a different literature. It's not always unfavorable just because it is 3D printed. Depending on the printing material, it can vary. This is a literature published by Professor Lee Jun Sok of Dangguk University, who I look up to, and I think this professor has thought long and hard into it because relining was not properly done with a printed denture. He thought long and hard, and after doing Rokotec process on the inner surface of printed denture, relining materials bonded easily. This is a literature published in 2022, so it's recent. The professor has said that after using Rokotec system, there was no problem at all, so I feel no doubt that it's true. Personally, I don't use Rokotec system, I just do sandblasting. If you apply a soft liner on the printed denture directly, it does not bond easily. And if you do sandblasting and add the texture, and then do soft lining and rebasing, bonding occurs nicely. I've wanted to discuss so many, so in the final minutes, I've talked really fast and fumbled a little bit. But thank you for your attention. Today, I've talked about immediate dentures, how to take impression and bite record what things we need to be cautious about when applying softer liner and how to do digital method and how to do relining with the digitally printed dentures. Thank you for staying with me up until late. If you have any questions, you can ask me via email. Or we can also utilize the real-time chat Q&A session to address your concerns and questions. Thank you. Professor, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Let's take a look at the real-time questions raised on the dental site. A lot of questions have been raised. Today, we are only going to focus on questions that are related to the contents of the lecture, so please understand. Professor, when you deliver immediate denture, do you add a reliner on the inner surface as mentioned? I do it immediately. In general, that is done. Kyonu? Do you deliver immediate denture on that same day after extraction? Yes. This is about digital equipment. So this will be addressed when printing is the topic. Alan the one. I believe uh, relining is imperative because of bone resorption after extraction. Is border molding required? I think this is not a very good question. When you do relining, do you do border molding? Yes. As mentioned earlier about border molding, in most cases, I use alginate. I focus on using this alginate well. Relining will be done, so border can be adjusted then. But if it is too short or thin, if the impression is taken that way, with only relining problems may not be solved. The relining material needs to go in thick, but if the border is too thin or short, sufficient support will not be achieved. If you take a good alginate impression, it's going to be okay, but otherwise you need to focus on the border as well. Captain Americano, as for patients with severe gag reflex, a taking impression can be difficult. How do you do this? I at times apply topical anesthesia or 
I also utilize intraoral scanner. This is not the final impression, but this is immediate denture. Soft lining will be done. So intraoral scanner can be used. Understood? Kyonu, do you fabricate final denture separately after immediate denture? This is absolutely necessary. Do you make modification for final denture as well? Do you fabricate a new prosthesis or do you utilize immediate denture? In most cases, after healing, I make final denture. If the patient is extremely old or has difficulty coming in, I do relining nicely or you can do rebasing. In uh, absolutely necessary cases, you can do that. Basically, you fabricate a new prosthesis, but you can utilize it depending on different cases. I have a question. Upon pickup impression taking, I don't think the different materials will be bonded. What kind of adhesive do you use and what kind of impression materials do you use? I think this person is talking about the whole tray method. There is no bonding between the tree materials, so you need to be careful in doing pickup impression. And I do not use a separate adhesives. Kyono, when taking impression with double tray technique, is there a way to prevent the position error? This process involves using alginate to take first impression, and then alginate is used again to take impression. The direction of alginate insertion should be as vertical to the occlusal plane as possible. If it goes from front to back, it can be deviated. Therefore, you need to pay attention to insertion direction. By doing that, you'll be able to avoid major errors. You need to make sure that alginate is not too tough. We need to make sure that the first alginate impression stays there. If there's interproximal teeth, we need to make sure that it goes in sufficiently and it doesn't move, and also make sure that alginate does not apply too much pressure. I have a question. When you add utility wax additionally on stock metal tray, at times it doesn't come out really nicely. Do you have any special tip to extend it? There's no special tip. Utility wax is very sensitive to temperature. It's not hard, but it can feel a bit stiff or it can become extremely soft. So I hold it with my hands. With my body temperature, I hold it and then it becomes easy to manipulate. If you hold it with your hands or if you use a slightly warm water, then you'll be able to manipulate it easily. If it becomes too warm, then it won't work. You need to find the right temperature. It's difficult to tell the exact temperature. Perhaps you can try a couple of times. There's further questions. I think a person who does martial arts has joined us. Because of the characteristics of martial arts, uh, sometimes you get blows on the jaw. Then uh, what kind of treatment can we provide? You need to provide a occlusal splint, but this is off topic. Uh, Captain Americano, after extraction, upon provisional denture fabrication, after one week since final extraction, Impression taking wax germ delivery is done and three weeks after final extraction, swelling becomes reduced significantly so the inner surface of denture becomes very loose. This is not about immediate denture, so you do extraction and wait a little bit. This is about the delayed denture, so let's move on to our next question. Can do? Do normal labs receive such requests? Requests for immediate denture fabrication. I think if they do denture fabrication, they would accept. Kono, when there's mobile teeth, what kind of materials and method do you use for bite records? Because the tooth with mobility will move upon impression taking, how do you do it? 
At times, I increase the vertical aspect of teeth without mobility and take a bite record using those teeth, or, or because the vertical aspect can become too significant, I just use silicone bite and have the patient close mouth. Then I remove the mobile teeth from the model. Understood. Very good. White tab. The question seems slightly off topic. Captain Americano, do you intentionally leave a root to prevent a bone resorption and then provide a full denture? This is going to be addressed in the next lecture when we address over denture. Kyonu, as for bony undercut and speckle, upon extraction, you need to rub with your hands first and then prep a head before proceeding. This is a comment. Can do. Can do. As we do extraction, do you do alveoloplasty? I generally do not do alveoloplasty because I thought it will be resorbed. If the patient has suffered too much or if there has been bleeding, we need to be cautious. But as a prosthodontist who provides denture for treatment, I think that alveoloplasty is absolutely necessary for smooth treatment. If we forego this step and if the patient complains of pain, then we will need to do trimming again and it will be double the hardship for the patient. Uja. This is the basic but also very difficult. How do you get a VD? This is about immediate denture. So how do you find a VD? I think this is easier than complete denture. Yes, because there's residual teeth. You need to adjust it depending on the level of uh, mobility. It will be much better. Kyonu, do you use horizontal plates like a fox plane? Yes, I think you would need to use it to look at the balance between both sides. Irpyeon, clinically, after extraction, how many days later do you provide a provisional denture and then do impression taking and delivery? I think this is off topic. I think this person is talking about a temporary denture. I have a question. When you use Omnibec, what is the material thickness? How thick should be the sheet? This is a very specific question. This is normally done at the lab. I don't think the thickness holds a significant meaning. We do not mold it, but we just check whether something is protruding out. And it doesn't matter if you use a thin one. The denture should not be wobbly. If you test it, it needs to be a good fit. So it should not be too thick nor too thin. If it is too thick, you will not be able to see it. We need to adjust the area which becomes pale when we press it. If it is too thick, you will not be able to see it. In my opinion, 0 0.5 to 1 millimeters should suffice. Captain Americano, how many months later since the final extraction do you start with final denture? So, when do you provide final denture after the patient uses immediate denture? So, I wait about three months. If we do things as speedy, it can be one or two months, but I think it is also related to where extraction has been done. When there's a lot of catalyst, bone resorption occurs very quickly and in the areas where there's cortical bone or the buccal side and the lower, it takes longer for resorption to occur. It takes about three months. There's a lot of cortical bone in the lower. Cortical bone, it takes longer time. What kind of measures can I take if the fit of the denture base is lower than anticipated? You can use soft liners. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. So how can I manage the patient's expectations towards immediate denture? I think this is one of the nicer questions. After immediate denture, the patient may think that they can eat a tough food, but 
that is not the case. Immediate denture is bound to be uncomfortable. This is right after extraction. So in most cases, the patients don't have prior experiences using dentures. So these patients are hard to please. True. I tell my patients if they use it well, that's very fortunate. But if otherwise, I tell the patients the expression compression bandage. It may not serve major function from patient's perspective, but it compresses the gingiva and reduces gingival swelling. And I tell the patients that it's sufficient. It helps in reducing swelling. So I try to lower expectations. We need to do that. The patients uh, are quite satisfied if you do relining well and occlusion is good. At first, I always tell the patients, just think of it as a compression bandage. So I try to lower the anticipations. I tell my patients that once all teeth are removed, you look unpretty. So if you use it, don't expect to be able to eat. But when you go out and socialize with your friends, you not look ugly to your friends. If the patient could chew well, that's a very good bonus. Violet mint. This has been responded a few moments ago. KATW0103, if the upper anteriors are protruding, how do you mark buccolingual position? How do you communicate with the lab technician? Do you mark it on the model and tell the lab technician to retrude it a couple of millimeters? I think this question is about how to do communication with the lab when there's lingual version. I don't move on and I ask the lab to send me the mountain model. If there's vertical elongation of tooth as shown earlier, I mark it with a line. When the teeth are protruding out towards the buccal direction, I'm the only one who's seen that situation, so on the buccal side, I prep it to adjust the protruding amount. You prep it, like prepping the buccal side. By prepping, you can adjust the labial version and the angle as well. That is how I communicate with the lab. That's a good idea. In the case of upper anterior, you can indicate how much it is protruding from the incisive papilla. This can be another idea. Or we can take a profile image and send it to the lab technician. We can tell the lab technician that it's protruding and the lab technician will be able to see it with the images. These days, technology has advanced so we can take images using our cell phone and send it via Kakao Talk. So the communication with lab technicians has become much easier. And communication means has diversified. Zisha, if you have identified an alveolar bone or gingiva that needs adjustment, do you do it chair side or do you refer to the surgical department? So in private clinic, you would have to adjust it chair side. In university hospital, then I think you can refer the patient. Captain Americano, as the patient uses complete denture, if it becomes loose, which do you prefer, direct method or indirect method? Personally, I prefer indirect method much more. I tend to send it to the lab. There's pros and cons. Uh, the patient needs to be without denture for a couple of days. It's about a complete denture, so we're going to only address it briefly. Kyono, is it better to use soft reliner after using tissue conditioner? Using a soft reliner after tissue conditioner. I've addressed it briefly. 
I've talked about the viscoelasticity when I was talking about tissue conditioner and soft liner. If it has high viscosity, it's tissue conditioner, and if it has a big elasticity, it's a soft liner. All products have viscoelasticity. The ratio of viscosity and elasticity differs slightly. First, you need to condition the tissue sufficiently using tissue conditioner, and once it becomes a stable, you can use a soft liner to press upon the soft tissue. I have a question. I'm learning a new concept, the viscoelasticity. I need to remember that. In order to stick to the manipulation time, do you use timer or other tools? I just look at the watch, but at times it can be kind of vague. The manipulation time can get a little bit vague. It's an excellent question. Manipulation time needs to be abided by. You need to look at the watch and you need to utilize the timer I used to do that. And after a certain point, I no longer utilize the timer. I just touch the material and determine how fluid the material is. Rather than using a timer, I tend to use my hands to get a good sense. If the adaptation of immediate denture is excellent, I try to make the solution more fluid and do soft lining. If it is too thick, then the vertical dimension can become too much. So rather than utilizing timer, I just feel how fluid it is and proceed. So you have extra materials and look at how it changes. Kyonu. After application of tissue conditioner or reliner on a media denture and upon removal, what kind of product shows good performance? To answer this question, we would have to mention specific names and it's kind of difficult to say in this show. The question is actually about which is better, tissue conditioner or reliner? Tissue conditioner is easier to remove. Autumn, metal plate is off topic. I have a question. Removing the soft liner with a heated tool, I think it's an excellent tip. Good evening. It's a really great lecture clinically, Professor, when taking impression for immediate denture, just like RPD impression. What is the benefit of using double tray method compared with individual tray method? Perhaps there can be less possibility of tooth extraction? Double tray method. Is it related to the extraction of residual teeth? The pickup impression will be taken for areas with teeth and for a dental acid area because rubber is used it can be said that it's an advantage however more than that you can do border molding in the posterior extension area ahead and you can do a better job professor peck i've received a lot of tips i have a question has thanked you Ao T S K H K. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. After delivery of uh, upper complete denture and lower partial denture, the patient complains of pain upon swallowing. I think this is related to a general denture. When the patient experiences discomfort upon swallowing, it's related to lingual side of the lower denture. Perhaps it's because of the posterior palatal seal is pressed. That may be so but it can also do with the lingual side of the lower denture. Captain Americana, they say that you should not put the denture with soft liner on the polydent. What's your opinion on that? You've said the exact same thing earlier. Yes, this was mentioned. Patra85, thank you. I have a question. Can I use alginate mixer or vacuum mixer? to mix the soft liner or denture liner for bubble removal. What's your opinion on that? I've never tried it, but I think it should not be done because it's going to stick. As it rotates, the alginate is resulted as powder and water is mixed, but it's not going to work. Clean wrap, it's excellent idea. 
Using adhesive is a great tip. Idea. Monte Cristo. Recently, after extraction in the upper, I provided immediate denture as the soft tissue heals. The patient has complained that that area was uncomfortable. I provided adjustment, but retention decreased. Should I do relining? Yes. When fabricating immediate denture, alginate is used for impressions, so it's difficult to get posterior palatal seal. That's why retention decreases. You need to do relining and you need to press upon the posterior palatal seal further. We need to tell the lab to adjust that area significantly. Shisha. Will doing relining after applying reliner monomer on the denture border increase the adhesion level? In the past, I've tried it, but I've not experienced a major difference. What about you? Me too. Study for others. Adhesive tip was excellent. So, the question about when do you deliver final prosthesis was addressed. Kyonu, can you apply different colors for teeth and gingiva when doing 3D printing? Yes. Compared with the past, a lot of advancements have been made. I have a question. If there is space that requires relining, what about doing scanning once again to refabricate the denture? Doing scanning? You can do conventional complete denture method. Good society. As of late, when fabricating digital denture, the most frequently used method is subtractive manufacturing method. In the case of overseas, are there other methods used? I'm curious as to how this technology will evolve. It's a question about printing. 3D printing is utilized for provisional denture or immediate denture. It's still lacking to be used as final dentures. Some say that approval has been given for it to be used as final denture. Yes, there are some comments on that regard in Denkar. What's your opinion? Personally, I do not use digital method for final denture. I still use conventional method and for provisional denture, I utilize digital dentistry. There are still many more questions left. Let's see. Today we have many questions. Let's go through them swiftly. Interior deep bite is just a general topic. Can do. In the case of patients with a few residual teeth, the VD will not be accurate. At times, the space where the teeth will go in becomes too tight. If the patient does not have vertical stop or tight VD, how do you set VD? Like RPD or full denture, if the patients have few residual teeth left, you have to take impression and using recording base, you need to find the right vertical dimension. Patients with tight VD, you need to raise it so that the patient does not experience any discomfort. Provisional denture will be addressed later. Krista97, I have experienced that some patients who initially use immediate dentures with soft liners or tissue conditioners will find them very comfortable. However, they often struggle to adapt and complain when transitioning to the final, harder material of final denture. How do you explain and manage this situation? I think this is a difficult question. Yes, it's very difficult. I have a similar experiences. Despite your best effort, some patients prefer the soft liner denture. The patients want to go back. Patients with thin gums especially tend to experience a lot of pain. I often resort to reapplying soft liners for the long term. 
I sufficiently grind down the hard acrylic and lay down the soft liner to make it comfortable for the patients. Normally, such patients have a dry mouth and extremely thin gums, and they tend to be older. I replace the reliners every couple of months. During the diagnosis and treatment planning stages, I think it's wise to suggest the possibility of such issues in advance to those who might face them. For instance, discussing the option of getting implant-supported overdentures could be wise. Because if the patient does not adapt to it, then we will need to provide implant-supported overdentures. Or else it's going to be a fixed bridge, but it's going to be extremely costly. A person has mentioned agar, but these days uh, this is hardly used. Uh, do you use it? I use it for duplicating model. I've never used it in patient's oral cavity. Understood? So I think we've exhausted all the questions. Professor Peck, thank you for your answers. I'd like to extend my gratitude to those who have participated in real-time chat. Now we will choose the Prosthodontics on Friday's best question. Those of you selected will receive the three Starbucks coffee coupons. Professor, can you make your pick? I'm sure it's difficult, but please choose one person. Multiple people have raised numerous questions. I've noted some people. I would like to gift the dentist who uses the ID. I have a question. Congratulations, I have a question. This person raises many questions during Prosthodontics on Friday. On Monday, three Starbucks coffee coupon will be sent to the person using ID. I have a question. Please don't feel let down just because you have not been chosen. Among those who have participated on the chat, seven people will be sent to Starbucks coffee coupons. Professor Beck, could you give a word of advice to your peers studying immediate denture and working hard up until late? As is with all clinical aspect, everything is important, and as we garner experiences, we end up with more successful and satisfactory results. In the case of immediate denture, Everything starts off with the impression taking. Yes, relining will be done, but how accurate the important anatomical structures such as the border are registered on the impression material is very important. Using that, teeth will be aligned. With that, immediate denture can be fabricated successfully in terms of aesthetics and function. It may be cumbersome, but I hope you take more attention when taking impression, and if you do that, you'll be able to get better immediate denture. Thank you for the nice words. Thank you for coming despite your busy schedule. Dear viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, how did you like the Prosthodontics on Friday seminar with Professor Baek Jang Hyun? It was very meaningful. We were able to get meaningful tips in fabricating immediate denture. The answers that were unanswered today will be addressed via reply. In the next lecture, Professor Song Young Yoon of uh, Tanguk University Dental School is going to talk about single denture. Thank you for staying up with us until late. Thank you.